Hey everyone, today I'm joined by Mike Gaglione. We're going to be talking about some new Logitech mice, the G403 and the G Pro. I've been spending a lot of time with these mice and uh, I love both of them quite a lot. So I'm looking forward to talking about the specifics. Yeah, so Mike's going to go through the human factor stuff, the shape, the usability in games, things like that. I'll talk about the technical specifications, how the buttons and the fulcrum in the switch work, all that stuff. Before we get into that, this content is brought to you by AMD and their affordable FreeSync monitors like the $390 LG 34UM68P. Huge amount of letters and numbers, ultra wide IPS display. Learn more about that in the link in the description below. Let's recap the hardware specs first. The G403 and G Pro are both $70 mice, though the G403 has a wireless alternative for $100 that we'll talk about later. The mice use the PMW3366 sensor, including zero mouse smoothing and zero speed related accuracy variants, or that's commonly called acceleration. The G Pro and G403 are effectively the same mouse, aside from shape. So when we talk about the G403, really we're talking about both of them, except for the shape, we'll get to that later. The internal specs are the same. Each mouse has two thumb buttons, a DPI button, LMB, RMB, and a middle mouse button, which opts out of the Logitech Hyper Scroll Wheel and instead uses a mechanical scroll tracking wheel instead of the optomechanical tracking they've used in the G900 and the Proteus Core mouse. The G403 also has an optional 10 grams of weight. The G403 weighs in at 87 grams unweighted. It's 124 millimeters long, 68 millimeters wide, and 43 millimeters tall. This makes it a bit larger than the G Pro, which measures in at 116 millimeters long, 38.2 millimeters tall, and 62.15 millimeters wide. The G Pro weighs in at 83 grams without the cable, making it a few grams lighter than the 403. The most direct competition to these mice would be the Zowie FK1. It's been around since probably about 2013 now. The Steel Series Sensei and Razer's Death Adder, one of the most prolific mice on the market. Corsair's M65 for a newer alternative, and then there's Logitech's own G03 as competition to the G403. In fact, the G Pro is a fusion of the G303 and G100 designs in terms of the chassis and the buttons which were borrowed from the G303. So that's the hard data, the specifications, but of course doesn't really impact how the mouse is used. So that's why I've got Mike here. Mike is an avid FPS gamer. He's got quite a bit of time in the Battlefield series. Yeah, I've been playing a lot of Battlefield 1 and uh, I've been putting the 403 through its paces. It's got a right-handed ergonomic shape. Um, the shape of this mouse is sleek to say the least. Um, Logitech has two RGB spots, one in the logo and uh, a small ring around the scroll wheel that you can light up and customize. Um, this makes it par fairly understated compared to most of the peripherals we see these days with all their L uh, RGB LED options and all the lighting, all the customizing and over the top buttons and exposed hardware. Um, this this mouse is looks like a single piece when you look at it from afar, so it's it's got a real sleek, mature look. It's right, yeah. It's a little more professional in that regard, like not not professional gamer. Although they did title it the G Pro because it was built with pro gamers, but professional as in you. I guess the idea is you could bring this into an office environment right. and not look like a tool. <laughs> yeah, the the look is definitely matured compared to what we've been seeing lately. Right. Um, I do wish the thumb buttons on the 403 were positioned a little bit more forward on the body. Um, I found that I really had to strain to get the back button, which I normally use as like a sprint button, so that was something that I noticed personally. Um, what about the coating, the surface material? The surface material is great on both of them. Both of the top coatings for both of these mice have, uh, is, it's like a plastic, but it's, it's a matte finish and it really repels grime and sweat and uh, all the stuff. All you, the nastiness. Yeah, and I, I'm kind of in the middle of the range with that. I get, my hands get a little sweaty after a lot of gaming and that's something I definitely appreciate is a good, nice surface that we're, well, that was That was that a problem. Well with the MX518, which I think you used. Yeah, I've ha owned both a 518 and a SteelSeries Sensei, and both of those have a gloss top finish, and yeah. they just collect dirt and sweat, and it's gross. And yeah. I, gotta clean, I had to clean my mouse all the time. Yeah, so these are a little better with that. I've been using the G900 for several months now since we reviewed it in May. That's this. Uh, it's really not collected a bunch of garbage. So uh, they, this is the same coating material as these, so it, it holds up pretty well. It doesn't 
get as grimy and nasty as like the G, the MX518 or the G5 used to. And one thing that is different between these two mice is that the 403 has a rubberized side to it that I absolutely love. In fact, I really wish that the whole mouse had this texture on it because it's sticky, it cleans easily, and it, it just provides a real positive grip whenever I'm, I'm swiping left and right. Um, the G Pro has kind of a harder plastic finish to it. Um, I almost would have been happy if they took the surface material from the top and put it all the way around the mouse as well. But um, this one kind of slipped out of my hand a few times. And, uh, it's I also smaller. It is smaller. So the size is definitely uh, had been, became an issue for me. Um, I'm really used to these bigger mice that, that fit into my hand and really fill up the grip that I use. Right. And I kind of use uh, somewhere between a palm and a claw grip. But um, this mouse, when I got it settled in the back of my hand, I found my fingers were landing really far forward on the mouse, um, which led to a couple accidental clicks uh, right. throughout one evening of gaming with my friends. They weren't too pleased about that. <laughs> um, yeah, alerting the zombies of your location. Yeah, or, we were, so we were playing survivors. H1Z1, yeah, yeah. And it, it didn't go well. Um, but with the 403, it fits in really well, and I, my fingers fall right into the center of the buttons for mouse 1 and 2, which right. I liked a lot. And that's, that's a good opportunity to talk about how the buttons work. So with Logitech's G403 and G Pro, they have a similar, a sort of modified spring tension system as to what you found in the G900. And the difference is basically the G900 uses a mechanical pivot. And so that pivot will have an image of it too that you'll be able to see more clearly what's going on. But there's a steel bar that sits atop a fulcrum and that bar rotates to accommodate the key press. So with the G900, which is the $150 mouse that we basically said is the best mouse we've used, but also $150. When you push the buttons anywhere on the key plate, it's pretty linear in terms of how you perceive the actuation as a user. The G900 has a pre-travel spring to keep tension on the switch and a PCB mounted at an angle so that the clicks are perpendicular to input. It's not a sort of sheer input that you don't want. The G403 changes this as does the G Pro. Again, basically the same mouse other than the exterior. Neither has the pre-travel spring keeping tension on the switch and neither has the steel pivot bar for the fulcrum. So instead, the G403 and G Pro use plastic deformation elements that connect the key plate from the housing of the mouse and deform on button press. This is less sophisticated than the G900 and we don't think it has as even a distribution of force across the key plate, but it also works better than some competing mice. The Death Adder, for instance, Razor's mouse, has a key plate that can flex under load because the key plate is acting as that deformable element that's receiving all of your force. Logitech is moving that deformation to an internal plastic fulcrum, which helps keep the force fairly linear across the key plate and reduce accidental clicks. Well, this goes back to what we talked about earlier. With the hand positioning uh, on such a small mouse, it really pushes your fingers farther forward on the mouse one and two surface, which can lead to accidental clicks anyway. Before getting to the conclusion here, let's take a moment to jump into the G403 wireless architecture because there is a 403 option. So basically the 403 wired is $70, the 403 wireless is $100. The G403 wireless uses the same architecture as the G900 Chaos Spectrum mouse that we praised previously. The G900 review, by the way, is linked in the description below and has a lot more diagrams and science behind this if you want to get the depth on the information for wireless. But I'll recap the basics here. The G403 has a radiation pattern that is dispersed in a fairly uniform circle around the mouse with an eight decibel milliwatt max power. The closest competitor to this that we are aware of is the SteelSeries Sensei Wireless, which tests at negative one dBm. Signal strength that makes Logitech's G403 and G900 some of the most powerful wireless mice on the market. And that's useful in high noise environments where there's a lot of RF interference, like a LAN gaming event or PAX or something similar. You'd be able to get away with using the 403 wireless without a cable connection from the floor of a LAN event and would be able to do so with a battery life of approximately 20 to 24 hours run to die with the lights enabled. And again, there's a lot more of that in the G900 article. So if you want to learn more about the interference and click latency testing, hit that article. Probably one of the only slights against this, these mice is uh, neither of them has uh, adjustable lift, lift off, which 
for 60 to 70 dollars i really think you should have that feature it's something i really like and it's a feature i notice when it's doesn't go right um, for me it normally manifests itself as the mouse stops reading too soon so i'll be doing a big swipe left or right and i won't turn as far as i thought and not being able to adjust that for my mouse is is, is a pretty big negative but i didn't have any problems with either of these guys uh lift off distance yeah yeah lift off is a pretty interesting problem to solve too there's not a, an option to tune that, as you said, in the LGS software, which we should probably mention is really at a top level. LGS works pretty well, and there's yeah, not I've, a lot more that you need. I've either. had no problems. The Logitech software works great, and it does what it's supposed to, and you don't think about it, which is the way that software should be. Right, yeah, it's not too aggressive or invasive. There's RGB synchronization with your other Logitech devices if you have them, but like I was saying, there's no lift-off adjustment in there. There is, however, a, a surface tuning option. So this uses sort of a, a, takes a white balance basically. It looks at the surface of whatever you're mousing on, the mousing surface, the mouse pad or otherwise. And that optimizes how the sensor responds to the surface. And that's again, the PMW3366 sensor. It's in most of the mice Logitech makes currently today. Uh, so it, it works well. It's not like just a gimmicky marketing thing. Now, I don't think you need the surface tuning, but it's not just complete BS either. Like you actually do see. Yeah, and it it might compensate if you got a really dirty mouse pad. Um, right. It might, you know, it, the software might come with presets for what your mouse pad might have been like when it was new. But if it's real dirty and you do that surface tune, it might increase accuracy. Yeah, that's right. something I haven't tested either. Just like, just get a terrible. Well, used. we're fresh and clean yeah. all the time. So yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, conclusion, what do we think about this? I guess we should mention as well, there is a weight in the G403. There is one weight and I've got to say it's the most clever weight and my favorite weight system I've ever seen in a mouse because it really simplifies it for me. It takes the guesswork out of what I want. It, you either have the weight in or you don't. Right. It's magnetic and it just comes out and goes back in incredibly easy. There's no trays or containers that you have to store you your lose. weights in. Yeah. yeah, it's one extra piece for the mouse and it, it's, it's just clever. I like it, it's sleek. Yeah, if you wanted it to be closer to 107 grams or something like that, or 100 grams I suppose would be the, it depends on if you, if you weigh it with or without the cable, then you add the weight. But uh, to me, I don't really feel that much of a difference these days. I generally, do, I play without the weights in the mice. I take all the weights out as well. Yeah. But if, I guess if you wanted the extra weight, it's there. Uh, so in terms of usability, it, the mice work as you'd expect. The sensing is accurate. The sensors are positioned pretty much in the middle of the mice. There is a difference between these two, I suppose, right? Yeah. So the G403 is more centered or forward and the G Pro is slightly back from the center. It definitely sits farther back when I got a grip on both of the mice. The, I found that the sensor on the G Pro definitely sat farther back in my palm, which for me was kind of a negative because I like the sensor to be up towards my thumb where I can really take advantage of wrist movement. Right, but. that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, so uh, competition, what do we have out there? These are $70, the wireless one's 100. Let's kind of ignore that for a moment. Versus these, Corsair's M65 you've tried. Yep. That's like a $50 mouse, non-RGB. Yeah, that one was one of the ones, like I said, it's kind of immature in its look, and that was a kind of a big negative for me. And it has, you know, the, the DPI switch button, which I still haven't found a real good use for. Oh, yeah, I'd rather are... just switch between the two DPIs I like. The sniper button. Right, the sniper yeah. button. Um, then there's the Zoe FK. I haven't had a chance to try that yet, but um, my friends who have them speak really highly of them. And then there's the SteelSeries Sensei, which I used for about three to four years until it started to fail on me. And that, that mouse was fantastic besides the glossy surface. Yeah, so that would be one of the direct competitors is Sensei. Yeah. Uh, on Logitech side, if you wanted similar stuff to look at, the G502 Proteus Core is about, what is it, $70 these days, I think. $70. You, you just I got, bought one. I just bought one and I got mine for $70, but now I'm kind of looking at this 403 thinking I might have made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, the 502 might be worth looking at if you wanted something a little heavier, more traditional. It is, it's quite a bit different in terms of the physical feel and look. And the G303, if you wanted something more similar to these, but for $50 instead of 70, that's what I'd look at. And then like you said, Zowie's a good competitor. Uh, Sensei for, um, from Steel Series, and then of course our M65 we look at as well. So I think that pretty much recaps it. Those are the new Logitech mice. The wireless one, it competes against more or less the same things. The wireless Sensei would be the competition there. Uh, there's not a lot of good wireless mice out these days. Razer has a few. Uh, the Ouroboros is wireless as well, but this is kind of the cane of them right now, and that's 150 bucks. So. Yeah.
As always, Patreon link the post roll video to help us out directly. Links in the description below for more information. And we'll see you all next time. See ya. Today I'm joined by Mike Gaglione to review some Logitech mice, the G403 and the G Pro. Mike, how's it going? I'm good. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready to talk about some mice, man. I've, been, I've put a lot. Do better than that. Sorry. I'm Italian. These mice, they feel good. We got that click noise. We got our decibel test. Shit, you're recording.